you. What emerging technologies or innovations do you see as the most promising for shaping the future of DeFi, Flavio? I think this is a pivotal time to talk about innovation, especially during the bear market. We've seen uh, that the projects that prevail are the projects that don't rely on trading under speculation and they are offering products that are sustainable and have business models that are adaptable to the new, um, I would say, standards that are coming up. So I want to touch on two points. One of them is the a trend that I'm seeing is tokenization. Fireblocks just spoke about it. Uh, we really believe in tokenizations as a way of unlocking uh, new liquidity in new markets and also bringing traditional finance uh, assets into the blockchain is definitely, uh, you know, we've been we've seen reports, this is a trillion dollar uh, market opportunity. And I think this leaves me to a second point. So when you're bridging these types of assets, you need to have a level of compliance, of course. So in Corium, we believe to give some control to institutions to be able to adopt DeFi into their already existing applications. And in this this form of communication, uh, we've seen more advanced, for example, ISO 222 standardization, which is basically making sure that uh, this messaging is compliant from the protocol level. So we're going to talk a little bit about smart tokens, and I think uh, maybe Helwan can elaborate. Yo, welcome back to the Zen Lounge. It is November 18th, 2023, and I have some updates for you. Today, we're going to be talking about Corium and how it's ISO 20022 compliant. You see people talk about ISO coins all the time. You never people you never see people include Corium into this list. Why? Because it's brand new. Luckily, Zen Lounge, we've been following Corium since day one, since before, basically since it was first announced. And we've been keeping everybody up to date, and we have some huge groundbreaking news. Did you know that Corium is working with top-tier banking institutions and leveraging their profound expertise in data standards? They're working with Trade Header is assisting Corium as it efficiently integrates ISO 20222 compatibility across networks. Who is Trade Header? They are a big consultant firm that consults uh, basically big institutions on becoming ISO 20022 compliant. So uh, Quorum is working with them and they're going to be a new ISO 20022 coin that is going to be on the compliant list. That's why it's important to stay up to date with research and information because every single market cycle, there's new coins that come out with you know new amazing things like this. There's so many people that invest in ISO coins. Now there's another one to be added to the list. Make sure to do your own research and due diligence. So Quorum also brands themselves as a super ledger. So many people are wondering more information. What is a super ledger? How do you define a super ledger? So Quorum defined a super ledger here. In order to be a super ledger, they believe it should include these components. IBC, the internet blockchain communication protocol that was native to Cosmos. And now it's expanding and offering a chain connection to coins outside of the Cosmos. For example, Ethereum, Solana, Polkadot, Avalanche are all adopting IBC and XRPL soon too because of Quorum. A super ledger would also have ISO uh, to help represent financial institutions, ISO compliance. It would use Cosm Wasm for smart contracts. I believe they're safer and more secure, prevents re-entrancy exploits uh, than EVM. And this is going to be what's going to be representing for uh, smart contracts. Uh, they believe that smart tokens are part of the super ledger for representing smart tokens and an XRPL bridge. Being able to represent tokens supported by this XRPL bridge. So you could soon bridge Corium and Sologenic solo tokens over to the super ledger of Corium and uh, benefit from all these amazing features. So that is how they defined um, a super ledger. And uh, they do have an entire Medium article about the new era in financial messaging and ISO 20022 compliance with Corium. I'm going to leave this 
in the description below. They mentioned how Corium stands in the forefront of this innovation with ISO 20022 and, uh, you know, how they're basically uh, integrating it and becoming compliant now. So this is huge groundbreaking news. You need to be aware that there's a new ISO 20022 coin. And uh, there's been lots of developments happening through Corium. It did launch basically at the beginning of the bear market and they've been expanding, they've been hiring, they have new developers, the team has been growing and they are delivering. So smart tokens are already being minted. We'll have a look at this. Uh, they created proof of attendance NFTs powered by smart tokens. So if you're staking to the Zen Lounge, guys, we're going to have a big community meetup in Los Angeles in February of 2024. And everybody that shows up uh, are going to be able to get uh, these proof of attendance NFTs. I'll give you some more information on this big meetup event soon. But let's have a look. So NFTs are being minted. These are a special uh, proof of attendance NFTs for the people that were at the EBC conference, the European blockchain conference, and they look pretty cool. So this is the collection. It's what they look like. And uh, this is a smart token on Corium blockchain live today. So uh, you can kind of see there's a big video. You guys should definitely watch that this video. I'll include it in the description below. Uh, Giovanni talks about Corium being a super ledger at the European Blockchain Convention. He does a great job. I learned a lot from this. I definitely encourage you guys, if you're new to Corium, to watch this video from Giovanni. Amazing presentation. So that's really all I got for you guys today. I just wanted to show you that Corium has taken the steps to be ISO 2002 compliant soon. Everybody that knows about ISO coins will know that Corium is also in that category. And uh, remember that you could always stake to the Zen Lounge validator. We have a validator up and running on the Corium blockchain. Remember these videos are not financial advice, suggestions, recommendations. You need to do your own research and uh, before ever making a financial decision. So I'm gonna continue uh, this video. Hopefully you guys uh, subscribe and uh, I'll see you guys next video. Peace. And so while we were thinking about this, we came to the idea of smart tokens because we had to deal with smart contracts and these smart contracts were not really you know utilized for 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 such transactions when when you're really thinking about iso 222 transactions just imagine imagine if two banks like bank a bank b two popular banks start using the chain um for say remittances or for transactions for just regular send transactions Imagine how many transactions are going to be there on the blockchain. There's going to be thousands if multiple banks start using the blockchain for that purpose. Because ISO 222 standard is, you know, a regular send function with ISO 222 is not one transaction, is multiple transactions. For example, if you want to send, um, let's say point. bank A wants to send funds to bank B to a specific customer, then bank A needs to, you know, specifically ask bank B whether this customer is fine in good standing. Um, so that's one message. And then the bank B one should, should respond, yes, we're good. That's another message. And then bank A, you know, I think that like the number of transactions to complete one send transactions are not a single transaction. There are multiple transactions. So if you were to have these transactions as smart contract transactions, then that would take, you know, a considerable amount of execution for, um, you know, for the. And so that's that's why we have the smart tokens. Um, smart tokens are designed for anyone. Let's say you own CBDC, you just come to Corium and get your, you know, your your token, and, you know, we have something called an ACL, which allows the token creator to customize that token whether it requires kyc whether it requires you know um whitelisting you know um